Welcome to Saturday Shop Tour. I'm Carl White. Let's get started. Uh, welcome to week 11. We've, we've been doing this for 12 weeks, so three months. Pretty amazing, right? And uh, most of you have been on every call, which is pretty amazing. Uh, today, we're featuring Ray Melora, who owns Salvage and Craft up in on Lake Wall and Paul Pack up in the Poconos. So he's going to give us a tour of his studio that he built and uh, tell us what he does and also give us a demo. So, Ray, I'm going to pin you or spotlight you and then uh, Ooh. It's all you. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, I was a couple minutes late there. My bad. Um, so sorry if I screw up in Zoom. I work for Cisco during the day, so I'm used to WebEx. So this is like all the alarm bells are going off everywhere <laughs> around here because I'm on a Zoom meeting. But uh, uh, good morning, all one, one and all. Uh, I, I am. I'm up at Lake Wall and Paul Pack right now. For those of you who don't know where that is, it's in Northeast PA. So um, it's about two, two and a half hours northeast of Philly. Uh, just a little. Uh, what would it be southeast of Scranton? So if you watch The Office, it's where they took the booze cruise. They didn't actually shoot that here, though. That was shot in California, not here. So um, anyway, uh, I am in my workshop, which I'm going to take you a quick look around real, real fast, and then I'll show you what I do. Salvage and Craft is a little company I started um, back in 2014 now, I think it is. So it's about six years old. Uh, and I make lighting and home decor and things like that. Um, I'm a bit of a picker. I'm a bit of a collector, uh, so I had to figure out something to do with all the crap that I was piling up, basically. Uh, so I decided to start making lights and lighting. So <laughs> um, thanks to Carl for setting this up. Uh, odd coincidence, I happen to know Mark Kalinowski from God. I don't know how long, I've, Mark, I've known you. Uh, and Mark knows Carl, and I knew Carl from work, from my old job. You know, so that's how we got here, if anybody's wondering how this all started. So <laughs> what is it? It's like the, the how many degrees of Kevin Bacon or whatever, where the how many right. degrees of, of Mark Kalinowski. So I think that's how that works. So. <laughs> I agree. So anyway, let me, uh, I'm on my laptop, my headset, because it seems to be the best way to connect. So I'm going to, apologies if this is a little jerky, but I'm going to uh, kind of walk everybody around here. I also normally don't wear glasses, but I can see my computer screen without them now because I'm old. So anyway, um, I'm going to turn the camera around and give you a little tour of the workshop, and then uh, then we'll build a light. So. Uh, I'm going to go like this, and I'm hoping everybody can see this pretty good, yeah? Yeah, it looks good, Ray. Okay, so uh, this is a timber-framed workshop. Um, I went to timber framing school about 10 years ago in the Berkshire Mountains in Massachusetts, a place called the Hartwood School. Uh, I'm going to kind of just slowly walk around as I describe it. I always wanted to learn how to timber frame, and I always wanted a timber frame structure, so voila, timber frame. <laughs> um, uh, myself and 21 other people built this frame in a week. Uh, using just hand tools. Um, I then brought it here to my property, stood it up, and I let it sort of sit around for about seven years until I figured out how I want to finish it. That's why it's all gray. Um, it's it's fresh. It was fresh cut hemlock when we made it, um, and it is now kind of beautifully aged. The outside of it, if I kind of approach a area here, I can show you. Um, everybody see this okay? Yeah, these are, these are two by sixes, cut tongue and groove with a little chamfer on the end. So we actually applied those to the outside of the frame, um, you know, this way, so you can see the frame. There's about an inch and a half of rigid insulation. And then I'll go outside in a minute and I'll show you there's fresh cut hemlock uh, board and batten on the outside. So um, I ran a 30 amp line to it. I have central heating and central air. I mean, I guess, it's, you know, it's kind of the, with the uh, uh, whatever glamping is for workshopping is what I have here. So, um, <laughs> I absolutely love the structure. It came out exactly how I wanted it, and it's a great place to create. Sadly, since COVID and everything has started, it's also become where I work, my day job. I unfortunately have to mix my day job and uh, my hobby at the same time. So I'm going to step outside. It's a little bright because of the sun, but I'll give you just a quick little view here um, of the outside of the shop. I'm hoping everybody can see that OK. So. Uh, yeah, looks that's good. all fresh that uh, there's a old farmer on the other side of the lake that still cuts his trees for for board and batten and for boards and stuff the guy who cut these logs that uh, cut the trees down to make this uh make the hemlock siding for me is 84 years old and his wife is 82 years old and she runs the sawmill so which is kind of fun <laughs> galvanized metal roof um and then it just it sits in a really nice spot on the property 
so I got a really good view and stuff. Um, and then that's my house that I live in on weekends. So, um, but anyway, go inside and I'll show you what I do here. Any questions about any of that? Just kind of as we're going along or? Usually people are more interested in the timber frame than they are the lighting, so, which I totally get. <laughs> um, so I have a bunch of stuff, let me, I was taking this stuff out when I realized I was late to the call. So let me pull one or two things out here. Just give me a second, this up here. So I can show you what it is exactly that I do. All right. I'm gonna put the laptop back down so it's not so herky jerky. All right. So um, I take lots of found objects and make them into lights. One of the main things that I'll do is use old liquor bottles because who doesn't drink alcohol these days, especially in a pandemic. So something like this, which was a bullet bourbon bottle, I'll cut the bottom off of it with a wet saw, which, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't have set up right now, but um, what basically do, I use a, a really high power wet saw. And I cut the bottoms off some of these bottles. Here's a Peridoro tequila for those of you who are into tequila. Um, and then I fabricate it using all kinds of parts, which I'm going to show you and I'll make it into something that ends up looking like, like that. So this is a, what is this one? Beanball bourbon from town, New York. You can see where it has a light in it and stuff. And it's got like an eight foot cable, nice plug on it and a switch, do that sort of a thing. I sell tons of these, um, in the city and stuff like that, where people are, you know, renting apartments and so on. I also take old old torches. I have a guy up here that will polish them for me and lacquer them. So this is the original brass, but it doesn't leave any, you know, hand marks when you grab it. And then I'll do the same thing. You can see I put a sort of a connector on there and, and away we go into a light for that. Um, I don't just do bobs and things like that. I'll take things like this old lantern, which I'm about to wire up. I just haven't quite gotten around to this one yet. So I'll make that into an old lamp really anything that I can find. And you could probably see hanging behind me and all around here is all kinds of my pieces and parts. Um, I recently was cutting bottles on a nice sunny day outside. So I have about 80 bottles down here um, that I have to build into things. I have a friend who has a brew pub uh, down in uh, Seaside and he's about to expand and he needs 25 more pendants. So, you know, it kind of, I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> so uh, is it, is that light enough? Can everybody see me okay, or is there way too much sun? I think that's okay. Is that all right, Carl? Not, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Yeah, sorry. Windows. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Windows, and it's sunny out. So, so to build one of these guys, um, what I would essentially do is if I took this one, for example, um, the nice thing about this one, it's got a screw on top, so it's going to stay on there really well. But I'll drill a hole in the, in the, uh, the lid here. Just get that ready. Um, I've got wire. So this is a UL listed twisted copper wire. Um, it's too, too, you know, just, there's no ground on these. It's just black and white. Um, I really like this stuff. I have it in this color. I have it in black. I have it in a bunch of colors. Um, I just find it works really well and it holds up really well. Um, and it also generally, like for the Herador here, I'd use the black, which you can kind of see because it sort of matches the label and stuff, right? Um, as far as parts, I don't know if you can see that, but I, I've recently gotten organized. This is not the normal me here in the workshop, but uh, I have all kinds of parts that I buy from a lamp supplier. Um, and they range from, let's see, let me grab a few and I'll show you what we do. And then I'll actually put this thing together. So, boom, boom, boom. Okay, so to make a lamp like this, a um, couple parts. One, I have this two-phase toggle switch, which I think you can see. Uh, this is a UL listed part. The reason I really like this one over some of the other ones that are made is because you can take it apart. It's got two little screws on it. And if I open this guy up real quick, see, this is all the stuff I was going to do in advance of joining this call. So apologies. You have to watch me use a screwdriver. Um, I try to stay with all UL listed parts as best as I can. I looked into actually getting some of these lamps UL listed. And for everybody who's ever tried to do that, it's insanely expensive. You know? And I, considering I sell a lamp for, I would sell this guy in a store in Philly for 75 bucks and they would get part of the commission. So it's not like I'm paying the mortgage with lamps, you know, but uh, 
to get something ULS is insane, but you see the inside of this guy. What's really nice about it is it has, you actually screw the leads on. So, I mean, it's not going to come apart. You know, it's a really, it's a really well-made switch. Um, I, I usually use these candelabra base sockets. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and the nice thing about these is it has this little screw end on it, which I put this guy, which is called, the official term is strain relief. Uh, you know, a new term, but the wire basically goes through this and there's a little set screw on it. And then when you put it on like that, this way, when you're putting weight on the wire, the weight is not on these two connections, but it's actually on the little strain relief guy. That's why I use those. So it transfers the weight to this whole connection. Um, if you can picture it, where is it? There it is. Da, da, da. So, you know, it would sit in like that and all the, all the, the weight would be transferred to here, not on this, it would pull off kind of a thing, right? So um, I have these two plugs that I use. Uh, the nice thing about these, these are also UL listed. There's a, the shielding is rubberized, so you can kind of pry it off. Um, of course, it's not gonna cooperate now because we're in the middle of a demo. Yeah, so you can kind of pry it off. And then again, you know, two screws on the inside of that. Uh, and then I'll put another one, this is a plastic strain relief, but kind of the same idea. Mm -hmm. I'll put that on the end here. You can see it's got these little sort of claws on it to grab the wire. So I'll put one on this end and I'll also put just for, to make it look nice when I can, especially on something like this, I will put a strain relief. I'll embed that into there. So it looks nice and finished. Sometimes you can't do that. Um, here's an example of it, not finished, but, but it looks pretty good on this cause it's made, this is a wood stopper. So it doesn't look crappy on that one, but, um, if I were to open this guy up, let me take the bulb out. Oh, the other thing I do, I make it so you can push the wire. I don't know if you could see that as I'm doing it. Yeah. You can push the wire down. So if you have big fat Italian hands like mine and can't reach inside a bottle, take a bulb off, you could do it that way. <laughs> so, um, and if I pull this guy out, let's see if it's gonna cooperate. Yeah, the bottle is the perfect size. So the whole thing comes out. But you can kind of see what I was describing there earlier. Take the shielding off. So that's how it all looks when it's done. So it's shielded, the cork comes down and kind of sits like that inside the bottle. I use a little shielding just to cover up the, the ends and make it look nice, nice. That's that guy. Um, the plug, I'll usually put, sorry, the switch rather, I'll usually put about two or three feet from the end of the plug. So it's not, if you do have it sitting on something, it's not like sort of hanging on this, you know, it's somewhat hidden behind the furniture or whatever it might go. And then here you can see on the end of this, how it all looks kind of nice and neat and finished when you're done, so. Um, same process I would use for, I can crank these bottles out pretty quick. As you can imagine, I, I've gotten okay at it, you know, over the years of kind of doing this. Um, you can, I can make one of these in about 20 minutes or so, I mean, or less. The hardest part is really is cutting the bottle. Um, when I is first the, cut, sorry? Is the bottom of the bottle, is that sharp? You just asked what I was about to say. So yes, it is. <laughs> it's not super sharp, but it's got a little bit to it. So I have a handheld orbital sander. I'm sure everybody on this call has one of those. So I just kind of go around it with 220 grit and then 80 grit and just kind of, you know, and, and it's not exactly the smartest thing in the world, but then I reach in and I'm like, yeah, okay, that's not sharp anymore. So I use my hand to, to sort of test it, <laughs> but I will absolutely sand these and I'll make them smooth all the way around. Um, my wet saw does a pretty good job of it. I have a really good diamond blade, so it tends to cut it really nice. Uh, mm -hmm. The thing I can tell you about bottles, uh, they will randomly explode. Don't ask me why when you're cutting them. Um, so I have a, a really heavy canvas apron over there that I wear and I bring it pretty high up. I tend to have a hoodie on, goggles. I mean, I do the whole, I look, it looks ridiculous when I'm cutting, but I have had bottles like this completely explode in my face, which mm -hmm. is not fun. I tend to stay away from really thin walled glass. So I don't know how well you could see this. This one, this one's pretty good. Um, like bottles like this guy, these apothecary type bottles are super thick. So they mm -hmm. cut really well And that. You could see, I don't know how well you could see it on camera, but that's perfectly sanded. Like, yeah. you know, there's, you know, and that's all of the orbital. Um, this Herodora one sells like hotcakes. Don't ask me why. Um, people love this bottle as a lamp. This is pretty thick too. The other nice thing, well, the thing I try to get, as you can imagine, a wet saw, right? You're going this way as you're cutting it. The flatter the side of the bottle, the happier the cut, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
so that one cuts well. This one's got a little bit of a tilt to it, so I'll use some shims under it. In fact, uh, speaking of shims, here's my, I have random shims that I've made. Um, and I'll use those underneath it just to kind of cut it, you know, keep the bottle somewhat smooth when I cut. So um, in the case of something like this, there ain't a whole lot of cutting going on. Um, but there is the prep of this guy. I luckily found somebody that does this stuff up here. So usually they do not look like this for anybody who has one of these laying around in their shop or has seen them at a flea market. You can get these, these old torches for about five bucks now. I mean, and they're usually covered in grime and grease. They just, and some people like them that way, you know, I'll actually leave them that way, but um, it cost me about $20 to get it. The guy that I buy, pay up here, he's an old timer, does it for me. Uh, he's been doing it a long time. He charged me about 20 bucks to do them, which isn't bad. So if I can get this thing for about 10 bucks, pay 20 bucks to do it. Um, all the parts you see on this guy, because I buy them wholesale, you know, I've got about $8 worth of parts on this and I can sell this thing for about 150 bucks. So wow. the most expensive thing in the whole, in the whole to do, as you can imagine, is the bulb. Um, I use the old Edison bulbs. I'm sure you've all seen them. I have a bunch of them laying around. Um, they now make them in the LED variety. You know, so you can get these big guys. They sell them at Home Depot. They sell them like everywhere now. I get them a few dollars cheaper through my supplier. Um, so it makes the bulbs. If you go to Depot and try to buy one of the bulbs, they're about $8, you know. If you buy my supplier, I get them for about 2 bucks because I buy them in, in bulk, you know. Um, but they look. it makes it look really cool. Uh, something else I'll do, I'll just show this thing quickly because I'm conscious of time. So this is a, this is a tenon off an old timber frame thing. And uh, you can see I kind of put a light on this and I just put a whole bunch of old switches and knobs from my, my dad was a ham radio guy. Um, and I inherited all of his ham radio stuff when he passed away. So I made a whole tribute series to my dad out of his ham radio crap because he always had this stuff laying around when I was a kid. So, so I'll do funky little stuff like this sometimes, which is kind of fun too. Um, but uh, yeah, so let me shut up for a minute. Any, any questions on any of that on the process or anything? Anybody? No. Um, there also are, which is kind of cool. This is an outdoor. Whoop, this one's flying. This is an outdoor fixture, which is cool. So I can make outdoor lighting as well. But basically, the difference is, is this guy's ceramic, um, and it has a plastic sleeve that goes over it, and all that's copper. I mean, obviously, it can't get soaked in water, you know. But um, when I tend to make these guys into lamps. I'll use all the outdoor stuff and I'll use outdoor wire as well. This way you can like leave it on your deck or something like that. People seem to kind of like to do that. When I to make this frankly into a light, it's pretty simple. The, the hardest part is getting it clean. <laughs> um, once it is, oops, here it is, there. Once it's clean, I will, um, I'll drill a hole like you see right there. Um, and that's pretty sharp metal when I'm doing drilling the hole. So that's why I'll put this little strain relief guy in here, run the wire through. Um, it usually works out pretty well that where the wick normally sat, I don't know how well you can see that. The, uh, these guys fit right in there, which is kind of cool. So it'll fit right down in there. I'll wire it up. Same idea. The wire will come out to a switch, to a plug. Um, and I'll put whatever variety of lights. I have these little, uh, these are these little flicker lights. I don't know if anyone has ever seen these. You probably see them like at Christmas time, like on things. They sell these everywhere. But um, so I'll put one of those guys in there, and it looks pretty cool. It looks like it's actually a little you know, light going off. I take as much care as I can to hide all the things, so you know you only see kind of the tip of this. You don't see this whole thing sticking out and looking goofy. So I try to aesthetically, I try to do the best I can on that as well. Um, and that seems to separate my stuff from other folks that I've seen. Um, a lot of people will take a light like this and they'll put a full size candelabra bulb in it. So you see this massive thing and the bulb sticks out the bottom. I get all OCD about these things and I try to have everything hidden and kind of, this is flat, you know, I just aesthetically, I went to school for design. It, it, it's a curse. <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse at the same Amen time. To that. <laughs> yeah, it's a blessing and a curse. Um, and I'm a musician, so I'm kind of nuts. But uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's 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 what we do. Yeah, perfect timing. We have about five minutes left. Great. Any any questions? Anybody want to buy a lamp? <laughs> How do you fasten the cork in, in, in the bottle? I'm sorry. How do you fasten the cork in the bottle? Uh, I don't. Um, 
usually like something like this, it's in there pretty good. So this thing will hang. You know, when you they uh, they tend to make the cork thicker than the actually the nose of the bottle. If it won't hang, if it just like slides out, I'll use this stuff called PC7, which uh, I'm sure fell to earth a million years ago and is incredibly bad. But um, for anybody who's never seen this, there's this stuff. It's two part okay, epoxy. Yeah, right, right. yeah, I'll use a two part epoxy on it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I use it on all my metal stuff. Um, this is PC7, this guy. So that's on there with PC7. I mean, you can't break them off once they're on there. It's it's pretty good stuff. Where, um, where's a light bulb in the in the kerosene? In the, in the and this guy? No, it yeah. goes on the end. Here, um, let me, I'm trying to find a bulb. Hold on a second. Uh, 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 so it would go like. Okay, I got you. Right. It goes like that. I got um, that is a goofy bulb for this, but I have these really long, thin uh, Edison bulbs, and it actually looks like flame, so it's kind of cool. So, it, and that's the other, I guess, great question actually, because I'll I'll try to aesthetically, I'll get the right bulb for the right application, you know. So I'll buy all these wacky shaped bulbs and stuff, but I try to make the bulb work with the lamp, so it doesn't overpower the lamp and it looks like it should be in there and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Would you insult the alcohol? Uh, I can't comment on that. That's, sorry, <laughs> it's industry secret. Uh, I do, uh, to an extent. My girlfriend Julie and I drink a fair amount of it. Um, I lived in Philly. I lived in Old City up until recently, and uh, we have a lot of friends that are bartenders. That is not a reflection on myself, <laughs> but um, so I get bot <laughs> bottles from a lot of friends that are bartenders that run restaurants up here at the lake. We get some bottles from them. My but everybody kind of knows now. It's a funny thing when you do something like this. People are like, hey man, I drank a whatever. You want the bottle? Like I get emails about it all the time. Oddly enough, this whole thing started for me. There was a um, I don't have it here. Right? Oh yes, I do. Hold on. Doing this quick, Carl. No, uh, not with a label. Oh, well, time. anyway, I, there was this thing called Root that came out years ago, and it was in a bottle that looked like this, uh, and I loved. It was a it was distilled root beer, essentially. It, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, I still have like 10 bottles of it, but that got me started on this whole thing, was drinking that and looking at it and saying, this would make a really cool lamp, you know? And <laughs> as I'm sure all of you know, that's that spark, right? You go, oh, I should do that, you know? And then here here we go. Now I'm in a timber frame making lamps, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, how yeah, that kind of works. And where do you sell them? What, like uh, I sell them online. Uh, so if you go to salvageandcraft.com, um, I have a few stores in Philly that sell them. Um, yeah, you know, I have some, I have a vendor I work with in Bethlehem, PA. They have, there's a, a really cool store. Uh, there are like a home goods furnishing store called Demasi. They sell my stuff. So I have a, a few vendors. A bunch of them are closed, unfortunately, because of COVID. So not selling a lot of lamps right now, but that's okay. Um, I have plenty to make. And then word of mouth, you know, I do a, I do a fair amount. I love beer. So I do a fair amount of, of microbrews and distilleries and stuff like that. The Hudson Distillery in upstate New York, uh, they had this really cool old um, building where they had a restaurant next to it. I did all the lighting for that. There's some pictures of that on my, if you go to my Instagram, it's got like all the stuff I've built on there. That's the only thing I, I don't use Facebook or anything. I just use Instagram. Um, but yeah, I did the Wall and Paw Pack Brewing up here. I, I've done a bunch of stuff. So um, I'm doing some custom order stuff now. It's just, it's fun. You know, it keeps me going. Um, I'm not exactly, you know, lighting the world on fire in sales, but it makes enough money to pay for the hobby. That's the way I kind of look at it. You know, so it's a, yeah. it's a ton of fun That's for great. me. So, yeah. It's imagine that a hobby that pays for itself. Who has one of those? Yeah. <laughs> anybody? Yeah. Anybody admit to that? I have one. I luckily have one. So. Anyway, there you go. That's it, Carl. I think we're almost at time. So yeah, you're perfect. Uh, any other questions before we sign off? No, I'm, I just want to say I'm a proud salvage and craft customer. I've had uh, pendant lights that, uh, Ray had made for me probably what seven years ago. Ray. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're hanging on our tiki bar down the shore. Been exposed to yeah. sodium air. And still working great. Still working. That's so, awesome. There, there's uh, quality control. <laughs> and by the way, I didn't buy them at a store. I, I picked them up at the back of his trunk when he worked for Glaxo Smith Klein. <laughs> <laughs> Those are back in the bootleg days, man. <laughs> All righty. Well, uh, thank you, Ray. This is Thank you. I uh, really appreciate your time. Uh, thanks, yeah, everybody thank else, for joining us. Have an awesome weekend. We'll see you next week. Yeah, thanks, thanks everybody. Hey.
Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.